Hey everybody, welcome to a look at Banisher's Ghosts of New Eden. If you haven't heard about this, uh, it's made by Don't Nod and published by Focus Entertainment, who are also sponsoring this look. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. We're playing as Antea and Red. These guys are lovers and they're banishers. Banishers are ghost hunters, essentially. If you're unfamiliar with Don't Nod's previous work, mostly the Life is Strange series, you'll know that they're pretty good at creating these morally ambiguous choices. And that stays the, the case here in Banishers. You'll be faced with a lot of different choices, cases to solve. Uh, it's, it is an action RPG, so there's going to be some fighting. The purpose of this video is to give you the introduction of the game, and you can make a decision if this is something you want to pursue further, or if you want to watch it on YouTube, or what have you. But either way, sit back, relax, enjoy, set the vibe, and let yourself get into this one. The game is available now, so I'll have a link down below if you want to check it out for yourself. It's available on PC, PlayStation 5, and Xbox. Let's get into it. Madam, sir, the ship lies at anchor off New Eden. A tender stands at your disposal. Dreamed of clouds, great long fluffy bastards, low over the sea. I dreamed of the abyss, in the darkest reaches of the deepest ocean. Good day to you, my love. And a good day to you, too. Are we in New England? <sighs> Welcome to America. Something's bothering you. Charles's letter. What of it? The ghost must be uncommonly dangerous, or he would banish it himself. Then we shall charge him double. <sighs> I'm serious. If the Reverend needs help, this can be no easy business. Red, you best be ready. I'll be careful, Master Duarte. Your apprentice stands ready to serve. Come on, Antea, we need to go. Night be. <laughs> Rory McWraith, gallant to the last. Life to the living, death to the dead. Consider our lovers, Antea and Red, the greatest banishers I ever knew. Life to the living, we say and death to the dead. It is not so simple. Since the dawn of humanity, the dead have lingered. Dead as alive, we are complex and emotional beings. Many and tangled are the ties that bind. Since the beginning of memory, banishers have fought to sever those ties. Death is but a trifle. It comes to us all. To haunt or be haunted. There lies the true horror. I, Charles Davenport, should know it. The haunting of New Eden scared me to death. I dearly wish I had not begged my friends to come and lift the curse. I wonder if he's talking past tense after this has all occurred now. Or if he's in the moment. Well, I guess we'll have to figure that out. June 7th, 1695. This is June. I'd hate to see January. I'd wanted to freeze my backside off in the summertime. I'd have stayed in Scotland. London wasn't much better. Look at it. 
It's cold as a bishop's arse, and twice as white. <laughs> I don't mind saying it, I'm very disappointed. Charles wasn't lying. New Eden is cold as death. You may well be disappointed. You'd better be at the tavern. With a hot grog. Or two. So we can see a bit of what's being set up here already. I think I weary of long, boring sea voyages to grim faraway lands. I can't remember the last time we did something else than work. After this, we should set sail somewhere warm and safe. The dead don't linger. No such place. But it's not a bad idea. These two being lovers, but also having an apprentice master situation is interesting. We're controlling her for now. That's all we'll say about that. As the crow flies. I heard you the first time, but I don't disagree. It's a, it's a, it's a cool setting. This is a very neat concept. Ghost hunting is not something that's that's new, but this time frame with ghost hunting and these two specific characters, this is going to be. I'm intrigued. I want to see where they take this. We got rats. I was going to say, in, in a way, it kind of gives me Plague Tale vibes. I think we can get through here. Sure. Let's go traipsing through the rotten, falling down house. Wild Chervil. So there must be a crafting component then. Can I get in there? Looks steady enough. Famous last words. Oh yeah. <laughs> Watch out! Notice the little symbol. Oh. Is it just me or are we not welcome here? Keep going. That must be the find a way to meet up with you. Banisher symbol. Over eager apprentices. Okay. Also, I, I want to learn more about I their break my way through here. How, like how long have they been together? Because now she's referring to him as an apprentice and he referred to her as a master. I think she called him an apprentice earlier too, but their relationship dynamic is Interesting. Ooh, hello. Okay, so we have a lock-on system. Well, that's, that's nice. We can do heavy attacks. Hello. I feel like we had a little bit of a lunge almost. Just a sneaky wanderer. You? Same. But I managed. Are Spectral these dust. Watching the road? Maybe. But are they keeping people outside town? Or are they keeping them in? That's always the question. Leather, okay. Man, this little town over here, that's cool. Huh. 
Behind you. Oh, sick. Just like rip its non existent heart out. <laughs> yeah, as easy as falling off a box. Can't tell how long these people have been. The original settlers, perhaps. Whoever, this doesn't bode well. I wonder if the amount of time that they're dead matters. Okay, they can just come out of anywhere. Or, I mean, I didn't notice when they first spawned, but in here there are some dead bodies, and I think maybe the one on the left came out of the woman on the ground there? Attacking with your weapons fills the banish gauge. When the banish gauge is full, press A to banish your target. Time to leave for good. Okay. Just an instant kill, and it did some damage to him, too. It does seem like we have a little bit of a thrust on attacking. It kind of pulls you into where the enemy's at. That's nice. That's nice. Can we get this? A note, damp and bloody. Perhaps these words will be lost in time, but I must write them. The date? I cannot say. I know it's the month of June in the year 1695. I thought we'd be safer in Providence. I thought we would finally see the children again, and the golden wheat fields would ring with their laughter. Their mother now lies dead, and I shall join her soon. Something insidious walks the roads. Terrible spirits look us. New Eden is cursed. You who reads this now, I tell you, run. <laughs> nice. These people left New Eden Town just a few oh, days ago. Oh, there is stuff in here. What exactly is going on here? Charge attacks? Oh, hello. Okay, so we have a big amount of movement there. And then I can banish. Okay, so these big alphas, that's a lot of damage. You do not belong here. But you can't banish them. Okay. I, me I bet you that's something you can improve later to make that more powerful. That all goes badly for the case. Situation's worse than you thought. Let's wait to hear what Charles has to say. Empty docks in a growing settlement. Never a good sign. So we started way over there. Isn't that what selectmen do? When we get to town, we may need to split up. To cover more ground. You may count the most responsible student a banished cadaver. Follow the rats. We'll see if you remember some of your teaching. If you're up for it. Always. Who the hell bums their own clothes? People who fear pestilence or disease. Or both. Well, how very biblical. Susanna, it's been days since we ate. Each day the town empties further. Folk would sooner risk the cold than stay. The minister said help was on its way, but I do not know how much time we all have left. Or how much time before the next sickness takes us all. I shall entrust my neighbor with this letter in the hope that it will reach you. If nothing changes, I'll try to cross the woods myself. I hear folk assemble bands, the better to safely brave the wilderness. May God help us, Sarah. People are leaving. The town is emptying. Stay on your guard. I'm just gonna check here to see if there's anything. Nope. Boston, Fort Jericho, the Harrow's Hamlet. Not the busiest stables I've ever seen. 
No ostler and no horses. The bundle of crops and ran out of food, and they probably eat the horses. Yeah, that unfortunately does seem likely. If anybody's curious, by the way, I'm playing on PC. I've got max settings, everything, except for motion blur. I always turn that off. Uh, but I am playing with uh, an Xbox controller. New Eden Town. Okay. You're welcome in committee. I have a great Let's feeling about this. Inn. Let's find Charles. It'll be good to see Charles and Esther again. <laughs> Would you a lecture on the sanctity of marriage? Area of investigation. You've reached the location of your current objective. Esther wouldn't dare. Sure. <laughs> Esther wouldn't dare. And we don't need a piece of paper to keep us together. <laughs> I okay. Eleanor. So when we have that happening on the compass, it indicates you're in the area, inside an area of investigation. Look for the inn. I can read good, so I know where it is. Oh, they're welcoming too, that's great. Let's just check these areas, just to be sure. No food here? That's what I would say if I had food here, for sure. Okay, so we've got hoof fungus, leather. We've got a lot of different materials that we've been picking up. Notice, the docks are closed for sabotage by fire. All trade to Boston, Marblehead, Salem is cut until the saboteur is caught. So now we're outside the area no investigation. In its own. Not in this cold. Something must have given a helping hand. Okay, let's go back. We'll go to the inn. Maybe we come down there after. Here we go. This must be the end. Path to the meeting house is closed by the governor's decree. The cemetery is closed by order of the governor. In hours of darkness, stay in your homes. No discord, no turmoil. A curfew? But why? Uh, the first resort of every self-respecting oppressor. Okay, Charles. Charlie, we're here. Your prayers are answered. Poor as a drink. Finally. Banish it. Please, come in. As it is gold, your serving woman may sit while we talk. Your serving I'm woman? Oh. She's the boss. You're not Charles. My name is Antea Duarte. This is my partner, Red McWraith. Good day to you, sirs, madam. Now, where's Charles? Minister Davenport said help was on its way. I assume. Keep digging, Fairfax. Good day. Pennington, captain of the train band. This here is Thick Skin Newsmith. We're the selectmen. <laughs> What's left of us? Why is Charles not here? <laughs> We're sorry for your loss. We'll do what we can. 
for his widow. The Reverend is dead? When? How? A terrible tragedy. Though our faith sustains us, we are still very much in shock. Our shock at Reverend Davenport's killing is so great that we must sit here in comfort, losing precious time. As governor of the colony of New Eden, it is my responsibility. Oh, look at us, sat here waiting to meet the same fate. We could all be miles away by now. You lot do what you want. I intend living. The esteemed select woman can be <coughs> brusque. Forgive her. I rest assured that her aptitudes far outweigh her manners. Or lack thereof. Her point still stands, Fairfax. Sitting here, doing nothing, we are as lambs to the slaughter. The banishers are here. Surely, with their expertise, we may yet prevail. Then I shall leave you in your expertise in ghosts and devils to find out. My expertise in blood and battle is of little use. Mistress Duarte, if I can be of service, you may visit me at home. On the other side of the street, as it were. Well, Governor, shall you leave or shall you stay? For myself, I'll stay. <clears throat> Our company has suffered terribly. But we are worth saving. And now that you are here, save it we shall. Please, accept my sincerest condolences for the loss of your friend. We feel the loss of our minister so very keenly. Charles Davenport was a man of great knowledge and devotion. The pride, indeed, of New Eden. It discommodes me greatly to remember how we found his body in the cemetery. Indeed, it distresses me yet further to tell you that we do not know what so tragically cost him his life. Uh, what do you think happened? What do you think happened? I could guess, to little use. It is evident, however, that Charles's unexpected death is linked to his investigation of the curse. In the minister's absence, I try, in all humility, to protect us all, body and soul, from our ongoing peril. You see, in my youth, I too was something of a demonologist. Rather a good one, if I say so myself. We're not demonologists, and neither was Charles. Is his widow Esther taking visitors? The widow Davenport is at home, and does not much venture out. Her house overlooks the dock. I offered Charles a home with a view across a pretty meadow, but he refused. He preferred the village life. Speak to her, if she'll see you. But she knows no more than we do about how her husband died. Hmm. Okay. So you mentioned demonology. You're a demonologist, you say? I am that. Like my father was before me. Faith and science are our twin compasses, you see, to a deeper understanding of the secrets of God's green and pleasant land, and those who threaten it. And what have your compasses told you about the curse? They have told me... They have told me that Reverend Davenport was better placed than I to solve our problem. Which is why you're here. We agreed it. I shall stand for the company, I said as the moral authority, the anchor, and the rock, as Charles and his banishers lift the curse. No pressure. Heroic work all round. Indeed it is, madam. Indeed it is. But we do it all the same. Because we must. Aye. Because we must. Why is town so empty? Of those who did not die, we are the few who stayed. Though our motivations may differ, all who remain have shown extraordinary faith and courage in the face of our adversity. 
Those who left, where did they go? Boston, outlying settlements, anywhere, everywhere. Although, as you may have heard, the weather has likely closed the roads. Some believe the pass through the dark woods offers salvation. I do not. I believe we must stand our ground. Will they return when the curse is lifted? I fervently hope so. They have homes here. But we sent the children away some time ago, and many could not live with their absence. If we do not resolve this situation quickly, the community of New Eden shall be broken, perhaps forever. What can you tell me about the curse? I can tell you that it has been our misery for many long months now, and I can tell you that it worsens by the increment. First, there was pestilence and disease, then came the nightmares, then came madness. In the end came death, and death remains. But in all honesty, <laughs> I think the weather is the worst part. Hmm. This never-ending winter hangs heavy on us all. Worse yet, it traps us here. What do you think caused the curse? In my humble opinion, I'll point to the obvious. The Abyss disgorges its spawn upon New Eden, bent on making God's poor creatures suffer. As to the nature of the demon, that's what we're paying you to find out. Our late friend Charles faced a Herculean task and acquitted himself with honor. You will have to do far better than that, I'm afraid. Our contract stands. If you'll have it, yes. Our contract stands for Charles. All right, for Charles. Thank you. We have what we need. Then I wish you success. By my instruction, a room is prepared for you in the old schoolhouse. I'll be here if you need me. You know what's really hard to do in games is write compelling dialogue without making it sound too in your face, too obvious, too handholdy, but like also make things intriguing so that players want to know more. I feel like just in that interaction, that's they did this very well so far. But that's don't nod for you, right? So. Now, the other guy, the compass Damn indicates the direction Charles. and distance toward the objective. Those yeah. cursed sea storms. If only we'd been here earlier. No, no. But as Charles would say, another day, another soul to save. So, wants us to meet with Esther. Ooh. These people have no idea what they're up against. This was the guy who said he lived across the way, so I just want to chat with him quick. So, he's done listening to Fairfax's prattling. That man turns a pretty phrase, and does so to the exclusion <laughs> of all else. Tell me, Captain, what does your rank signify? Militia? I maintain the train band. I also anticipate threat. Natives, brigands, the French and other monsters. The curse, though, that's a whole different kettle of shite. Not even poor Davenport saw that one coming. Any thoughts on the origins of the curse? None useful. I'm a military man. I'm no dark artist. I'll take that as a gentle jab. You don't believe in my work. I can tell you're a woman of talent and capability. I respect that. The rest of it, that's your remit, not mine. Me? I'm the old guard. You and your Scots green on your the hope. You'd best prevail. You know what, for an- We'll be back. I'll be here, unless I'm not. For an old school military guy? We should go to Esther. 
pretty understanding. That house stood above the tops. We caught, I'm sure you guys caught the comment when we first walked in there, how they made some pretty clear assumptions about us. Prove them wrong pretty quick. slept for fear you would not come. I'm at a loss. Would God even allow me to drag you into these... these dark times? Esther, you're not alone now. We're here. I'm so sorry we didn't get here on time. Truly. I know. Charles kept saying it. Have faith. They will come. If only he had kept his faith himself. What happened to him? Poor Charles. Just one more victim of the curse of New Eden. You know how he is. Was. Restless. Impatient. It's not that he gave up on you, his friends. But that he could wait no more. I believe he tried to lift the curse. I too have questions. But I have no answers. Nor do I now have a husband. How were things, you know, before all this? Before the curse? It was a busy and exciting time. Charles immersed himself in the community here. He had a hand in everything. The people came to rely on him. I'm sure they look to someone else now, but I can't imagine it's the same. So he was well respected. What can you tell me about the esteemed Governor Haskell? Fairfax Haskell is well read and educated, but at times his back can be too stiff. He shares Charles' interest in the unknown, but his passion seems less than practical. He's an academic. Still, good to know our patron has some understanding of our work. We met the captain, too, along with the huntress, Thickskin. Do you know them? I find Thickskin knew Smith's manner a little frightening, but I think she has a good heart. A fine hunter, by all accounts. Captain Pennington comes with a reputation for soldiering. He comports himself with a wry dignity, but I suspect that beneath it all, he's just... sad. Charles thought so too. There are wounds beneath Saul Pennington's armor, he said, that time and God have not yet healed. Is there anything we should know about? Lord, deliver me, for I cannot endure this. I cannot endure it, and Charles does not deserve it. Anything at all, Esther. Please. I have felt Charles present about the house. <laughs> His ghost lingers. He needs help. If he's here, I promise I will know no rest until he has his. You can count on us. We'll start with the house. Charles's papers are gathered in his office. Take what you need. Thank you, Esther. We'll take a look around, if that's all right. I caught very quickly in there, there was an option Where to look at her portrait. Or, oh, here, portrait. So what does this mean? Okay. Inhabited portrait. The once joyful and educated good friend of Antea and Red is now a young widow who has lost her anchor and drifts unmoored on a sea of mourning. So... We have a hint. After seeing her husband's ghost, grieving widow Esther Davenport was deeply distressed. 
So this talks about... Um, this gives us some of their like motivation and things that we might have to look into a little bit further. There's chronicles here. Understand why Charles lingers. Investigate the study. Investigate the bedroom. Okay, I like that. Evolution is locked for now. Here's our inventory. And here's our map. I like this layout. I particularly like when games have stuff like this. Some type of um, chronology that you can follow. And I don't know if this will always stay or not, but that would be awesome if it did. So we'll see. We'll find the way. So we unlocked a hint. It contains important information about the person it's linked to. You can refer to these hints at any given moment through the haunting cases menu. So investigate the study and investigate the bedroom. A new Scotch tune in G major by Henry Purcell. Purcell. Could you find nothing better? To understand why a ghost lingers in the incarnate. I believe you brought your piano forte to New England. It cost a fortune. But you cannot part a pianist from their beloved keys. Well, it sounds like you're gathering hints to figure out the solution, and then once you find them all, solved. Letter from Eleanor Combs. My dearest Charles, how delighted I was to read your words. It's always a pleasure to hear from you and to know that yourself and your beloved Esther are doing well. I've contacted our brothers in London, but unfortunately we could not find anything in our archives that matches the description of the events you've experienced in New Eden. Be that as it may, pestilence and never-ending winters are phenomena perhaps too broad for us to pinpoint the exact cause. I can give you no better answer. Be it sorcery, the presence of an ichor, or something else entirely we cannot say. All I can do is invite you to continue your research and to take note of all your observations. Our Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stoll has so little presence in the new world. Any new information shall be precious indeed. Please stay safe, my friend. So he's reaching out to say, like, hey, uh, do you know what the heck's going on here? And she's basically saying, no. I didn't know Elnor and Charles were still in touch. The St. Paul Brotherhood is a tie that binds. Charles was so eager to continue his research here in New Eden. If only we had known what would befall us. Have you received other visitors? Most dare not leave their homes. Although Mr. Bachelor came to see me. That was nice of Mr. him. Mr. Bachelor? Is that name a little on the nose? Where were you staying, my dears? The governor had a room prepared for us in the schoolhouse. The schoolhouse? Wouldn't you rather stay here? You'd be more comfortable. It's very kind, but a long day ahead of us. I don't want to bother you. I don't have much. But promise me you'll come for dinner tomorrow. For old time's sake. Of course. This is Charles's. It's like he never left. Esther, some food and ale for you. Sorry for your loss. Your neighbors hold you in their hearts. Oh, that's nice. So, like we alluded to before, Charles was well regarded and it sounds like she was liked as well. A study of H. Purcell's Shaconi in G minor for strings. Okay, so she's big into this Purcell. Sadness and Interval or a study of the Aeolian Scale by Heinrich Pietri. Aeolian scale, very specific, very weird, but also very cool, if you're familiar with music. My sweet Esther, I can't tell you how much I long to get home. This work in the mystical Scottish Highlands is exciting. I can't argue with that, but I miss the sweetness of our home. However, I know that the few months I have left away from your loving arms will be of great benefit to me. Through this experience, I will increase my knowledge, and all this I do to protect you from those dark worlds that swirl around us. It's your love and trust that pushes me into these mysterious entrenchments that pushes me to do my best. It is for you that I do this, for when I can see the pride in your eyes, then I know what role I play on this earth. I know that I can be stronger. I know I can do anything, as long as you look at me with that spark that is only yours. I'm thinking of you, your love forever, Charles. How I longed to hold you in my arms. The announcement of our marriage was to my heart as a delicacy on my palate, a sweet of which one cannot tire. At last we shall be together and together forever and ever until the day many years from now when we are old and the last death separates us. This is from 1685. 
For only death can extinguish the love between us, and I'm sure that not even death can undo the tenderness I feel for you. I want everything to be perfect for our marriage, and I will make it so. I will write to you every day until that blessed moment when I can finally shed the weight of letters and tell you in person every day how I feel about you. So she's basically reminiscing about everything Charles-related. I was down, and yet you were there to support me. You are an angel from heaven to help me in my darkest mission. You are the light that guides me through the darkness of the invis invisible. And yet I feel so sorry for bringing you to this tortured land. You know well that things are not as they should be in New Eden, and I'm sorry to have you by my side, for I fear for your life. I wish we could have found a quiet corner of this land there to raise our children, but I feel a curse. I think we should leave. Or perhaps you should go ahead while I defend our home. Think about it, for I cannot bear the thought of darkness taking you away from me. How pleasant to see these old familiar things from your house in London. That porcelain saw many a dinner turned lecture with Charles. I miss him so. So do we, Esther. Okay. Charles is still here, and Esther is completely distraught. She lost him. This must and be now the study. Back, a ghastly figure. It must be unbearable. Excuse me, man. We we're a little Remember too. When he started to wear these close to look there. wiser and older. No, he was hiding his hair loss. <laughs> Faith always was his beacon in the darkness. In people as much as in God. He's a good man. I can still picture him crafting your very first Bane ring. You sound much more fond of the moment now than you were back then. Bit green for an actual haunting, you said. <laughs> you were. Still, you did all right. So the Bane Ring, if I had to guess, is what enables us to banish, perhaps? Because you saw him when he, like, punched in there, when we punched in there. A precious king from a chess set protected by a glass dome. Okay. That's from the set he taught me with. I'd know it anywhere. Did he keep it to remind them of his favorite? Or to remind him that he had <laughs> yet to beat me. Ooh, okay. So, world map. I'll check that in a second. So, it seems like a lot of these things that we're finding are relatively um, optional, but tons of world building stuff, right? None on this side of the water and few on the other know I came to New Eden as a minister in order to pursue research into the New World on behalf of the Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole. And what strangeness have I found? There are ghosts here, yes, old and innumerable, but they are quiet. I shall never say the word aloud, but I suspect there to be witches. And if I find one, I shall very much like to ask her for her story. Formicarius, theological book from Charles' personal collection. Fortalitium Fidei. I feel like somebody will understand what these mean more than I do. Scribbled Bible verses. When I say, my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaints. Thus thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions, so that my soul chew this strangling and death rather than my life. She comes to me in dreams. Charles's notes mention Job, chapter 7, verses 13 to 15. I'll look for that reference. Job Red, 7, 13, 15. Hmm. I'm just writing this down because I don't know if that's something I'll have to remember or not. Whoa. Didn't mean to do that. Whoa. 
What do all these dreams have in common? Are they the promise of a doomsday or a nightmare coming? Visions, foreshadowing, is someone behind this? Who's the real target and what caused this anger to burst forth? I need to know how it gets into our heads. Sleep no longer offers rest, and this cannot perdure. These notes are erratic ramblings. Charles was worried about the curse plaguing the settlers' dreams. How malicious is this curse tormenting people in their beds? Okay, so we have Charles Davenport's ghost. He was worried about the influence the threatening spirit had on the settler's dreams. So in these cases now, can we switch between them? I'm not sure. Oh, yes, we can. Okay. Yeah, cool. Where do nightmares come from? I remember the teaching of my masters, may God bless their souls, against the threatening unknown when the common knowledge is not enough to understand a situation. The sagacious and pious man will wisely turn to the very roots of his art, the words, their meaning, and the power hidden in each of them. Nightmare has nothing to do with the nocturnal female horse, as in the French cauchemar or the German nachtmar, mare. Here comes the 12th century Middle Dutch and means ghost or demon. Huh. Okay, a nightmare is not a puny fiend sneaking into the bedrooms to suffocate the dreamers, but one of the rarest and most powerful spirits defined by its only purpose to spread its insidious and unforgiving wrath upon any living soul it may reach. According to my research, no occultist ever successfully banished a nightmare, but why? Could a nightmare be more than a ghost? I'm afraid so. I remember a disturbing poem I read in London in my younger years about the terrifying abilities of such entity, supposedly able to penetrate the dreams of its targets to influence their thoughts and perception and make them endure their worst fear. Able even to bend their distance or alter time, creating tantalizing and personalized nightmare its victims can't hope to escape from. Such a petrifying concept. I pray God with all my heart and soul that this is not what has risen upon us. How would we then escape despair, death, and doom? I need more information, but where to find them? Charles Davenport. What is that? Silver brooch habit habitually worn by Charles Davenport engraved with a distinctive three-hilted sword. Charles always wore this brooch. His things are untouched. Nothing's moved. It's pretty common when people are grieving, I think, to just leave everything as it is. Children's Psalm. Lo, children are in heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Psalm 127.3. Three drops of lavender oil and chamomile infusion before sleep. Wintergreen to rub between palms and behind ears three times a day. If restlessness persists, use lemon balm. A little bit of a treatment to sleep. Remember how they used to argue about books we hadn't read? Like we weren't there. Oh, you actually listened. <laughs> I'd always let my mind wander. Yeah, you do seem the type. My dearest sister, Charles is dead. This is an unsent letter that she's written. I cannot tell right from left. I cannot tell which day it is or how long ago my Charles departed. My world has come undone. Nothing happened as it was supposed to. I could not attend the burial. The shame of it. How I failed my dear husband. I just could not find the strength to leave the house and walk to the place where Charles died. There to see him buried. Lord have mercy on us and guide our friends to us before it's too late. New Eden will not last much longer without my beloved husband to protect it. I do not have any words left in me, but I thought that you, who loved him so, should know of his passing. Esther couldn't attend Charles's burial. Poor woman. That's terrible for her. Okay. So... The first hint was that she was grieving, deeply distressed. The second is that, exhausted by her grief, she was unable to leave the house to attend the burial. So now, Esther Davenport did not properly bid her husband farewell and now suffers from it. Okay. Esther never got to say farewell to Charles. I could have made him manifest. Now that we know why he might be back, we should go investigate the cemetery where he was found. Oh, cool. OK. 
Okay. We'll be right back. Toodles. Are you leaving already? We need to investigate the cemetery. What will you do for my Charles? If he's present, we'll find him. Then we'll ask him what he wants us to do. Must I see him too? First, let's find out what happened. After that, we'll see. Best get started. Time may be against us. You'll be all right. I doubt it, but I'll do my work all the same. We came here to help Charles and help Charles with Shell. We're seeing Ask those around. a lot. See what people will tell you. I'll go to the cemetery and do the same. I assume that means talking to the dead. Hi, you too. Okay. To find the location of your next objective, open your map. Sincere Paris's shop. Investigate the cemetery. So this is kind of the area that we came down to originally. What is that? A wisp. So close to town. It's telling me something. The cemetery is closed. Shocking. Not to me it ain't. Where are you leading me? Ooh. Hello. Oh, that's like a full stun there. Whoa. Enough. Okay, so that's teaching us about block, which I was kind of just doing. Okay, if we get hit by that. X to use a decoction. Man, these guys actually hit pretty hard. Okay, there's the parry. Nice. No one is safe here. Was the Wisp trying to get me in trouble? Most of these people died fighting. Someone didn't want them here. Striped Wintergreen. Go up. Ooh, what is that now? Why am I... Why is my rings glowing like this? Pyrite. Insight. As a banisher, you can feel places or objects that have been marked by ghosts. When in close proximity to these elements, your bane rings will be triggered and light up with orange. Walk around to find the source. Places or objects have been marked by ghosts. Find the nearby spectral mark. I've seen more graves here than I've met settlers. Many dead in more recent years. Are there various degrees to the glowing? Yeah, see, it's off now. So I don't think it's this way. There's Charles' grave. Why didn't you wait for us, old friend? I swear I'll make it up to you.
Okay, so it's definitely not this way. Maybe just follow the wisp. A memory lingers here. I might be able to reveal it. Perform ritual. Okay. Memories of the dead linger here. To reveal them, you must gather the necessary resources. I need seashore candles. Medium-sized plant with thin, long leaves and star-shaped flowers composed of five yellow petals grows close to water. If I mix the stones I found earlier with seashore candle, that might do it. Okay. So if that's the case... We should head down. Let's grab everything that we can here. No doubt we're going to need more of this in the future. Whoa. Whoa. So you can get them as they're forming, it seems. I could beat you in my sleep. Oh, neat. Oh, we don't have a way back up there. Okay, banishers can perform rituals. The nature of the site determines which ritual should be performed. Performing a ritual consumes resources even if you select an incorrect one. To reveal the memories, you need to perform a hearkening ritual. Okay. So this will reveal an echo. Make manifest, force a ghost or specter to appear, and force a scourge to appear. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. In each stain hides a story. Hello. In the name of the Lord, I command you. Be gone from this place! You do not command me, clergyman. Who are you, ghost? Unveil yourself! Well, since you ask so politely... Who are you? I am everything you've ever feared! Be gone! You have no shell! No ties! No purpose! No. But neither do you. <laughs> She's just commanding it, essentially. Commanding this to happen. Whoa. Damn it. That thing he faced. What was it? Yeah, so he tried to make the spirit manifest. He failed. Facing the terrifying entity threatening New Eden, Charles Davenport's heart gave out. Whoa, she caused him to have a heart attack. Charles Bible. Found half buried in the mud of the cemetery. It's open at job 7, 13 to 15, which is what we read earlier. When I say, my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaints, then thou scarest me with dreams and terrifiest me through visions, so that my soul chooseth strangling and death rather than my life. This tie is doused with the essence of Charles' ghost. After a closure performed by Antea, the bond between the ghost and the world will be severed for good. 
We have some details here, it says. Is that maybe in the inventory? Yeah. The tie that binds his ghost. With it, I can make him manifest. Back to his grave, then. Okay. Let me just quickly check up here. I mean, getting them before they spawn seems pretty crucial. But we're just facing baby specters right now. Oh yeah, it was around the other side. Okay. Uh, I guess we probably want a ghost or specter to appear. Now is a good time for we old friends to talk. We've come too far, Red and I, not to see you one last time. Your pupil has become the master. If we fight, <laughs> I'll beat you. It's creepy. Come on, Charles. Join me now. I know you're here. Her scars are very interesting, and it leads up to this tuft of white hair, like almost I connected, know you're hey? Here. You know me, ghost. I only wish to talk. Esther worries. And I am here at last. Oh, poor Esther. I'm so sorry, my friend. So sorry for us all. What happened? What's going on here? Sad to say, dear friend. I made a mistake. And it cost me my life. Is Red with you? There is no time to waste. Why did you not wait for our help? The threat was rising. Despair growing. There were so many dead, Antea. So much sickened flesh. So many afflicted souls. There was no more time. Do you know how this curse began? What prompted it, I do not know. Nor do I know when. Many months ago, certainly. But I do know this. This nightmare chose New Eden for a reason. So, a ghost. This one is different. Implacable. Very clever. Many magnitudes more ferocious than a spectre. And just as relentless. Before you died, you investigated the curse. What did you learn? That our enemy is deceptive and merciless. That we should not underestimate its power. We? I am dead, dearest Dante. But I am a banisher yet. I may still teach you. If I allow you, which I do not. Dante, do not repeat my mistakes. 
If a nightmare curses New Eden, you need all the help you can get. Its presence felt strongest in the Meeting House. Perhaps the Light of God there forced it to fight its ground. I had the building closed. The worst of the malevolence is contained. But it won't stay locked up for long. We'll banish it, Red and I. Our good friend's death shall not go unpunished. Be warned. This nightmare is too angry to be persuaded. And too powerful to be destroyed. Your death pains us greatly. Your return pains me too. I know. For my part, I'm glad to have seen you one last time. To have had the chance to warn you. I thought nightmares were a myth. A nightmare is the rarest of ghosts. A powerful, insidious spirit, birthed by tragedy most dreadful. How do I banish it? There is meager wisdom in the texts. What little there is says it cannot be banished at all. If it's a ghost, I can banish it. You took notes, I suppose. Where might I find them? They... vanished. <laughs> in the days before my death. Perhaps I mislaid them. Which is not like me. If you find them, read them carefully. Perhaps I missed something. Something important. That sounds weird. Like, can we trust him in this form? You know, I'm not sure. How did this nightmare kill you? I believed that I could come to the cemetery and make it manifest. To my initial delight, it worked. I now suspect it came by choice. It seemed amused. As if it were a pleasant game to weigh my measure as a man. Hmm. How does its malevolence manifest? It poisons minds and sickens bodies. It draws spectres to it and sours the weather. It delivers nightmares to one's sleep. For a time, screams tore through the night as folk awoke in terror. When it appeared to me, I did not see its true face. But I heard a woman. She was... love. I felt her gaze. My heart froze. I died. The spirit is vengeance pure. The ghost of one who was terribly wronged. I've heard your warning. You can go. No. I must remain. Huh. Esther needs my protection. My flock needs me too. You know how this works. You know I won't allow that. Okay. I am still myself, Antea. With time, I'll grow stronger. I can help you. The longer you haunt Esther, the hungrier you'll be. You know this. This is different. I'm the Reverend Charles Davenport, your friend and mentor. You know me. You know I am a good man. I knew you. You were a good man. Now you are a ghost. And I cannot let that stand. But I swear it, the nightmare will end, and Red and I shall do the ending. Charles Davenport was a good man, and a fine mentor. And you a fine student, though you took a hard line. I never could unpick that from your character. Has life tempered you since? Life has tempered my steel. Death and the manner of it has made you the very thing you once opposed. Goodbye, Charles. This explains why she was a bit standoffish. Wait. Wait for what? We're banishers. Death to the dead. Let Esther oh. choose for Oh Lord, please don't ask me to do that. Esther, my good wife, and the very best. I miss you so. Oh dear Lord, Charles, why are you here? Why have you come back? You must leave, please. 
I must stay. I must protect you. The thing in the meeting house feeds on our torment. I should have known that. I know better now. Antia, give Charlie the ascent he deserves. Charles Davenport, you have no reason to stay. Go. Let Esther grieve in peace. Save her, my friends. And save yourselves. Save them all. I'll walk Esther home. I'll do it. The women can talk. Uh, then, all the way to the schoolhouse and make the bed. Charles is at rest now. And Taya, she gave him the care he needed. So it sounds like the ghosts, if not banished, kind of develop like a hunger and will end up essentially fighting to stay My here. Charles. Where do you think he is now? He's... Uh, I don't know. I miss the warmth of his hands. His calm presence in our house. If I close my eyes, I can picture him. He's in a place where sunlight chases the snow away. It is warm and there is fresh milk. The sheets are cleaned and pressed and folded. Nothing can ever be the matter. You're right. He's at peace. And you deserve to rest. It's such a cool premise. Like, and I like that she's like, I do not, I don't know where he is. Like, they understand the process, but they don't know all of the details about why things are the way that they are, where these guys are banished to. I'm curious to know about these banished, or these, these Bane rings. Like, how are they made? What are they made of? What's the, what's causing this to work the way that they do? I'm sorry. I'll miss him. Dearly, tomorrow, we'll continue investigating the curse. Good night, Esther. I am glad you are here. Both of you. We need you. Okay, to the schoolhouse we go. <laughs> you jamming? What is that other weapon there that we're using? We did the right thing. Charles was our friend. I love you, Red McCraith. But? <laughs> but when it comes to ghosts, your heart makes you reckless. It's dangerous. Were you really about to banish Charles? So, 
Yeah, because she was going to banish, and then he just left on his own, it seemed. And those must be totally different outcomes, right? Like, he left on his own. That's maybe why she she was asking, where did he go? Or, like, I don't know. So maybe we do know what happens when they banish them, and that's, that's like, a kind of permanent thing. I'm not sure. That wasn't Charles. That wasn't Charles. That was the ghost of Charles. Charles Davenport. Our oldest friend, the man who brought us together. Our friend is dead. His ghost was a danger to his wife. Ghosts only bring misery, Red. Make no mistake, they steal life's essence from the living. Aye. They don't always do it out of malice. Give them that. We are banishers. We end suffering for those who live. We bring closure to those who don't. A ghost may suffer too. A sin puts a gentler end to it. But not a safer one. Better to banish and be sure. Right. Would you banish me? If it came to it. You'll not escape me so easy. You I would bring back from the dead. <laughs> That's not funny. I'd fill you with fresh essence. I'd give you so much essence you'd return bloated with life. Steal essence from the living to feed my ghost, you with me. <laughs> and then I'd kill you again. You're a scruffy-headed lout, Red McGrath, and I will never let you go. Over my dead body, mister. Thought I was meant to be the soft-hearted one. <laughs> you are. I think Charles was right. This thing in the meeting house could be, what did he call it, a nightmare? I really hope not. Such entities are legendary ghosts, even for banishers. Let's go find out. We'll see tomorrow. Now, to sleep. This was a dreadful day. Poor Charles. Poor Esther. This is such a cool Esther. premise. And it's executed so well right now. I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Wait, what is this now? Whoa. Whoa. And Taya, she took her firebane. She says I'm the reckless one. Wait, what? Where'd she go? Okay, so now we're him. Banisher techniques. As banishers, we're no spiritual guides or inquisitors. We are ghost hunters for hire, specialized and sensitive crafters who train hard to protect the living through our rituals and knowledge about ghost inspectors. We are no cult. There is no hierarchy nor established dogma among us. Almost like ghost hunting mercenaries, right? The most obvious reason why a banisher becomes a banisher is because he or she wants to protect the living from the dead, whatever the reason. We are efficient, adaptive, and versatile. Our community is sparse and nomadic, just like our predecessors were. We wander the world in search of living victims of the dead, cleansing haunting cases, using techniques tried and trusted and honed by generations of masters and pupils, releasing or banishing the ghost, rarely blaming the living. Now it says releasing or banishing, both capitals. I wonder if those are two different methods. It must be. Unlike puny sorcerers, we do not waste our time crafting enchanted rifles with the butt, barrel, and stock engraved with runes and other symbols of power for hunting specters or otherwise. Who would wish to depend on a single weapon? Instead, we bring our bane powder, prepared according to recipes handed down from generation to generation, rendering any firearm capable of shooting and damaging a supernatural target. Okay. No matter what the ammunition. Efficient, adaptive, versatile. Which is what they said up here. We're efficient, adaptive, versatile. Our knowledge of alchemy and botany helps us selecting minerals and plants whose properties will support our work. We do not waste time in libraries or schoolrooms. We do not waste our time drawing, carving, or engraving complex circles of power, because what we gain in power or nuance, we lose twice as much of 
or more in time, risking putting ourselves and those around us in unnecessary danger. Instead, a clever banisher carries stamps in wood or metal uh, with which to mark a door, wall, or stone with the necessary symbol for the appropriate ritual, presumably what we used in the graveyard there. We also wear rings upon our fingers with these symbols, so we always have a range of powerful runes close at hand, as it were, efficient, adaptive, versatile. Thus we prevail, thus we fight, thus we send back the creeping dead where they are supposed to be. From Death to the Dead by Balthasar H. Frenhofer. Maybe like an early banisher. Death to the Dead. Where are you? Oh boy. Now, oh boy. The crows, every time we've seen them, it's been bad, right? Or ravens. What's the difference between a crow and a raven? And there? If you've made it this far, I can't believe we're an hour and 20 minutes in. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Why would you go up there alone? Let me guess, closed? And there. Oh, wow. Okay, so he goes a little differently here. He hopped in aggressive. I suppose you specters have seen Antea. I like the little indicators for where an enemy's at. You're the boss, Anomi. You could have included me. Yeah, why? It, it is weird that she would get up and leave like that. But I'm I'm wondering if it's a situation like we like we saw his kind of nightmare there, right? Maybe the nightmare is able to kind of summon people, get them to do things. Or maybe they maybe the nightmare got her to come to the meeting house. Alpha. See ya. The combat feels pretty good. I'm excited to see if we get, like, I imagine we're gonna get different moves and stuff like that, maybe some combos. That's Antea talking. The hell? Three blind mice. See how they run. See how they. So this was in the dream that he woke up from, or I presume the nightmare. Antea? Blind. All blind. Oh, Red, can't you see? We never stood a chance. Antea, are you hurt? Where are you? Huh. I'm here, my love. What happened? Whoa. <laughs> I'm here, my love. <laughs> How mundane. Show yourself. God came to the man in a dream and said, Behold, thou art dead but the man had done nothing wrong and said lord wilt thou also slay the righteous what she's dead oh my god will you slay the righteous be not alarmed. I bring you aid. There is no aid. There is only dereliction. Where's Antea? What have you done with her? <laughs> Hell's balls. <laughs> Lady, if you hurt her, Hell's be balls. a king to love, a fool to the last. There is no love. There is only defilement. Oh, jeez. 
Throwing down. Oh yeah, we are. This is gonna be rough. Oh, really sick parry there. Nice one. Okay, not great. What? Oh my god. Okay, so they'll both attack. He will suffer like I do. All right, let's go with this again. Okay, that I'm going to have to dodge. Better. Ooh. Okay, so that was one of them. One bar. What the? Whoa. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where's Anthea? If you laid a finger on her. You're what? Come to her aid? There is no aid. There is only. Retribution. Give him back. Touching. You come to claim your man. You think you love him. You do not. There, in the dark of your manor, there is no love. Only betrayal. I offer you a trade. He stays and you leave with your life. I'll bargain with no ghost. You have a brain, yet you think with your idiot heart. You're weak. Whoa. No! to her aid now when all is lost. If you do, I'll be waiting. Okay. I have questions. The icy ocean made a diamond from his grief, then buried it in his heart. The weight of his failure dragged him down.
Outside time, drowning in the gloom, he spoke her name. Oh, dude, what a what an opener! This is this is sick. Take me instead, he screamed, soundless, to the cold and silent waters. Out beyond the black veil of death, something heard his cries and reached for him. So these little vignettes with Charles feels like he's looking back at moments in time almost of our of our story. Like he's it feels like he's telling it from the end and recounting it. Let her go. Take me instead. Let her go. Oh. Ah, you're awake. A seeker? Who are you? She who rescued you. Tended you for days on end. Weeks, maybe. Weeks? Oh, God. What have I done? Get your strength back before you beat yourself up. She's dead. Yes. That's why you're here. And why I was sent to look after you. Who are you? I feel like we've met, but... I'm sure we have not. I feel like I know you forever, but... but do I? You're confused. It's normal. You've been near killed by a nightmare, you've lost your beloved, and now you've a witch by your sickbed. Witch? Witch. I go by Seeker. Hmm. Find the Banisher, said my mistress. Tend him, and answer any questions he asks you before you leave him be. So, how do you feel? Does it matter? Of course it matters. It means you're alive, and you haven't given up. Who sent you? Her name is Ceridian, and my hands and words are hers. Beyond that, don't burden yourself. Ceridian, this little seeker who asked you to find me, is she Scots or something? It's Ceridian. She's too old to be from anywhere in particular, and while, yes, I found you, she told me where to look. This nightmare. How it spoke. How it tore right through. I've never seen the like of it. Few have. Fewer have lived to tell of it. What drew such a powerful spirit here? Who knows? Something awful, I don't doubt. The worst angers rise from the most terrible wrongs. A friend said that. He's trying to warn us. An immutable law. You have wise friends. What am I to do now? How do I? How do I do it alone? You're not alone. Have faith. If Ceridian had told me more, I'd tell you it. But you must have faith. Have faith. You say that you do not know me. Easy said. Harder done. What comes easy in life tends not to matter. It's the hard stuff that counts. You have a hole in you. A yawning, grimacing pit in your soul. That's love, that is. The hole won't fill because the love won't die. God, what have I done? Here's the thing. Unlike most, you get a second chance. I suggest you seize it.
Why'd you pull me from the water? What's your business with me? I have no business with you, but my mistress does. Why? Ceridian says the wall between the living and the dead is under threat. You, it seems, have a part to play. This is mine. You've lost me. No, I found you. But so did your grief. And it demands to be felt. You may think you're done with your ghosts, Red McCraith. But they aren't done with you. I'll go now. Rest. Why ever my mistress saved you, she has good reasons. The best. Where are you going? Home. To Ceridian. She needs me. Where shall I find you if... or when I need to? Maya marshes. Great big swamps other side of the woods. You can't miss them. We'll know when you're coming. Until we meet again, then. <laughs> That's right, Banisher. Now, turn around. What? I'm leaving. That's so cool. Okay. Find your way. Banisher, if you read that, it means that you have enough brain power to know your alphabet. You've not resisted going through what I left behind. <laughs> you may take whatever you deem useful since my mistress wants you to live. We shall meet soon enough. Until then, be well. The origin of banishers. Exorcism. The wandering exile or the banisher. Okay, we can get into that at some point. One sec. I'm just curious if there's anything. I don't know what this is, but I'm staying away from it. These look like all the rune markings that we could choose from, albeit more of them. What is this? <gasps> Man, really cool. Yeah, am I? Uh, if you read the Steam page, it does explain something that you're probably wondering right now. I'm not going to spoil it, but if you want to go and check that out. I mean, it's not a spoiler. It's literally the whole premise of the game, but uh, it talks about Antea a bit. So I would suggest you do that. Anyways, we'll wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you made it this far, if you made it this far, uh, big congrats and big, big shout out to you because you're a real one. Uh, let's make the code word for making it this far the ends of the earth. You just type that in your comment and I'll know you made it this far. Thanks again to Focus for sponsoring this video. I normally, when we do these looks, I like to take like half hour to an hour, but I was just like in it. I've really enjoyed this. This is so cool. Uh, the premise is great. I, I can't wait to see where this goes. If you guys want me to make a series on this, let me know because I would be super down if you guys are into it and uh, we'll go from here. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed. Check out the links down below to get it for yourself, and we'll see you next time.